Fort Hood bid farewell to one of the Army's newest Major Generals. A retreat ceremony was held in honor of Major General Joseph P. DeSalvo, the former Deputy Commanding General, Free Corps, and Fort Hood. I want to thank everybody for coming out on a beautiful, hot Texas afternoon. I didn't realize how hot this uniform was. As we say goodbye and promoted Joe DeSalvo to Major General today, say goodbye to Joe and Lee, to Kit, Emily, AJ, and a special welcome to uh, Major General and Mrs. Uh, Little, Joe's mother and father-in-law. Thanks for coming all the way and being here. To Joe's brother, sister-in-law, and cousin, thank you guys for coming. This is a big day for the DeSalvos. We're, we're uh, sad to see them go, but honored to be able to promote them. I want to thank the team that put this great and very professional ceremony together. Mr. Green from the Three Corps Mission Support Element, right-hand right man, Command Sergeant Major Coleman. The soldiers of the 1st Cavalry Division Sloop Battery, our color guard who do magnificently in the heat, our wonderful 1st Corps band, and through all of your efforts and discipline, we are giving the DeSalvos the Phantom Corps send-off and promotion they truly deserve. I promise to keep this short as this Texas afternoon heat is beginning to kick in and I can feel the sweat down my back. What a fantastic day to bring everyone together to celebrate and honor the years of service the DeSalvos have given Fort Hood and our Central Texas community. Joe and Lee are a true team, and their service to the community, the soldiers, and the families of Fort Hood will be a legacy from which this community will benefit for years to come. I've been in this unique and wonderful community twice, this time for a second year, second uh, year now, and any time I speak with families, the local leaders, and soldiers, I hear about the efforts and accomplishments that the DeSalvos have been involved with. This team has not only supported, but has actively improved the great place across the board. Joe and Lee are two genuine, caring, intelligent leaders. They are team builders who believe in the Army, Fort Hood, and this excellent Central Texas community. They know that the great place can be greater and have used their time to help improve not only the readiness of the Corps to fight and win, but the quality of support to our families and soldiers as well. Time does not permit a review of all the contributions of this astounding team, but I must mention a few. Lee, I'm starting with you because you have given so much of yourself in support of Joe throughout his magnificent career as we pin two stars on him today. I know you've been there through the thick and through the thin. And you've done so much to help soldiers and families throughout their, your career and certainly here at the great place. While here is a senior phantom warrior spouse, that sounds cool, you gave countless hours of your time to the community, sharing in the grief for our fallen heroes, actively supporting Army spouses and family agencies, and working directly with schools, both here on Fort Hood and in the Central Texas community, to improve the educational opportunities for our Army families. Your achievements will endure long after you and Joe move on. Lee, you have made the great place even greater. I know that without your support, Joe would have had to work that much harder to achieve everything he has achieved here and in his career. Thank you for your service to our soldiers and our families. You have truly made a difference in the lives of so many of us. Just look at the number of supporters here to say goodbye today. That should tell you something about the impact you and Joe have had at the great place. Bless you, we're gonna miss you. Joe, while Lee has done all the things, you have achieved a few accomplishments on your own, which I'd like to take a moment to mention as well. Joe is a combat leader who lives the warrior ethos. He always places the mission first, he never accepts defeat, he never quits, and he never leaves a fallen comrade. In his first year here as the three corps chief of staff, Joe always placed the mission first. With his experience and powerful leadership style, Joe was able to achieve measurable improvements across three corps and Fort Hood in such diverse functional areas as strategic engagements, behavioral health, risk reduction, suicide prevention, and information operations. He achieved all of this while overseeing the three corps staff preparation for a combat tour in Iraq. In his second year on our team as the United States Forces Iraq Deputy Chief of Staff, Joe never accepted defeat. During this combat tour, he faced three massive challenges, none of which proved beyond his abilities. The merging of the three corps staff with the USFI staff, planning the complex drawdown of US forces in Iraq, and establishing the foundations for an enduring US-Iraq partnership. Joe applied his experience and his characteristic energy to achieve complete and resounding success in each of these areas. His decision to partner the USFI staff directly with their counterparts in the Iraqi Ground Forces Command proved to be a valuable catalyst in readying the Iraqi Defense Forces for total self-sufficiency. 
Upon returning from Iraq in his third year on our team, Joe never quit. Instead, he took over as the three corps DCG and led three corps to the highest personnel and equipment readiness levels we have seen in a decade. Joe's ability to influence process is a senior leader and mentor to subordinate commanders manifests in the many accomplishments that he has achieved as a deputy commanding general. The flawless transformation of the 3rd Cavalry Regiment into a Striker Cavalry Regiment. The opening of the Comprehensive Soldier Fitness Training Facility. The implementation and support of the Personnel Readiness and Logistics Readiness Review Process. And the success of this core staff achieved during Ulti Freedom Guardian in Korea are just a few examples of Joe's contributions of leadership. Joe will never leave a fallen comrade. He was here during the tragic Fort Hood shootings in November of 2009. His guidance to the three Corps staff was immediate, clear, and steady. Joe worked tirelessly in the aftermath of this event. Because of his efforts, the three Corps was able to respond quickly, communicating effectively with our partners in Central Texas while maintaining security and situational awareness. Joe was just the leader we needed in the weeks that followed, right through the commemoration of our wounded and our fallen comrades. Joe has been an outstanding soldier, leader, and colleague who has consistently produced results above and beyond expectations. That is why I am so gratified to see him assume even higher levels of responsibility as a major general. For many, this would be a big step up. But in Joe's case, I think he has already been working at that level for years. Now he will simply have the title that is more commensurate with his abilities and soon lead the paycheck. <laughs> George Patton said, nobody ever defended anything successfully. There is only attack, 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 and attack some more. Joe, you and Lee have never been satisfied with maintaining the status quo. You have both not only attacked shortfalls, but you have strived for and achieved improvements in areas across all of three Corps, Fort Hood, and Central Texas. We will continue to take care of our soldiers and their families and continue to build on the legacy you leave here. Joe and Lee, you are a results-oriented, driven couple who understand that the strength of our Army is our soldiers and the strength of our soldiers is their families. They understand that soldiers and Army families are we care for and the greatest assets, the sons and daughters of our nation. Their dedication to the community, the soldiers and families of Fort Hood have made the great place greater. Joe, I know that you and Lee will take your passion for our military and families with you to Southern Command in Miami. Somebody has to do it. I know you will continue your tremendous contributions to our military and our nation. I wish you and the entire family the best of luck at Southcom, knowing that Fort Hood's loss is their gain. For your efforts and dedication on behalf of the Phantom Warriors, family, civilians, and the Central Texas community, I thank you for all you have done, and I know that you will be missed. But always, you will always be welcome at the great place. Thank you for your leadership, Phantom Warriors, Army Strong. Major General DeSabo expressed many fond memories of the great place as he begins a new chapter in his Army career. General Campbell, thank you again for all this. For the record, I wanted to do a quick retreat ceremony, go to Legends for a quick beer hall, beer call, I mean, and then hoof it after that. Uh, but Phantom Six thought otherwise. And sir, Lee and I really appreciate first Monday's farewell dinner and also this wonderful ceremony, so thank you. All promotions are special. That's nothing new. You've heard that all before, I'm sure. As you go up through the ranks, what I find the best is the list of incredibly smart, gifted, patriotic, dedicated and talented subordinates, peers, and seniors of all ranks. And the list continues to grow and that I've had the privilege of being associated with. And that's the only reason why I'm handing, standing here today. And a special thanks to, again, our great Central Texas neighbors. No one in America does it like you do as far as community support to our soldiers and families. And you truly are an inspiration. I've always been blessed with an incredible family. My parents, Jim and Sally, are in Richmond, Virginia right now and couldn't make it, but they've always showed me what right looks like, and I'm still learning. My older siblings, Pam and Phil, my twin sister Sue, and my younger brother Ted, who's here, all inspired me and continue to inspire me to do my best. And despite the short notice nature of this frocking, my before mentioned brother Ted, his lovely bride Tanya, got tickets within 48 hours to get down here and flew in from Cleveland, along with my niece Angie DeSalvo, who flew in from Iowa because I'm her favorite uncle. Thank you so much for being here. I'm the luckiest son-in-law around, my father and mother-in-law, sir, and Lori Little. Yes, I still call my father-in-law sir after what's going to be 27 years and 32 days, and I'll still continue to call sir after that. And by the way, I believe this is their 48th anniversary today, so 
Happy anniversary. Now, my father-in-law and mother-in-law have been in every, all my promotions except one since I've been married. And for General Little, this week may be a, a seem like deja vu. Back in 2003, I asked General Little to promote me while I was assigned at Fort Irwin, California with the NTC. And literally, as he got onto the plane from Tampa to fly west, I got a three-day notice, warning order, to leave Fort Irwin and get into Iraq to take command, all unbeknownst to General Little. So he shows up in Fort Irwin thinking he's going to be for promotion, and what turned out to be him, my four-year-old son, AJ, at the time, and my nine- and 13-year-old squabbling daughters, Emily and Kit, and granddad got the luxury of packing the house and doing the five-day trek from coast to coast. Rumor has it my father-in-law rode solo after day number one until day five. <laughs> to this day, I honestly think I had it easier in Fallujah than my father-in-law had it and Lee had it with the pack out. But sir, don't worry, it won't happen again. All that said, sir, mom, how the hell you ever welcomed the cavalry lieutenant into your family is still beyond me, but thank you for all you've done and continue to do for Lee, the kids, and myself. And Lee and I are blessed with three great children. I'm still saying that after two days of packing. <laughs> Kit, the good news is we'll finally be in the same time zone, which means, Emily, the bad news is we won't be in the same time zone. You have also, Kit, you have also become somewhat of a legend with your Mandarin acumen that Ron Perry continues to bust on me after my memorable performance with General Lee. But just thought I'd throw that out. I don't know how you say it in Spanish or Mandarin. In English, it's we're very proud of you and continue to reach high. Emily, okay, I will now become a Longhorn fan, only unless Army plays UT and fillets the Longhorns. Now I can say that because I know Army isn't playing UT for the next 10 years. The only other better victory is watching Army beat the hell out of Kansas State, which I look forward to. <laughs> Emily, you're an amazing young lady who can kick a soccer ball 40 yards, be all district first team, accrue 72 hours of college credits before starting college, and still keep the messiest bedroom I've ever seen. <laughs> but we still love you. AJ, AJ, remember the good news, bad news things? Well, my son, I guess the good news is you're still in the same time zone with your mom and I. The bad news is you're the only one in the same time zone in our house. So mom and I look forward to the extra living we're gonna give you. That's a good deal, huh, bud? And finally, to Lee, there's absolutely no way I'd be here today without your love, support, faith, and 18,756 pounds of household goods and that damn five pound dog. <laughs> no one has a bigger heart, walks the walk when it comes to faith than you. I love you. And to everyone here, Lee and I can't thank you enough for your friendship, generosity, patriotism, and outreach. We all wish you Godspeed and look forward to seeing you on the high ground. May God continue to bless all the service personnel serving in combat and their families. God bless you all, and God bless America. Phantom Warriors.
of the American man at arms. Thank you. 